Welcome to episode 230 of Clarity Compressed, and what better than episode 230 to do something we've never done ever, 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 ever before, and that is film an episode while I'm driving a car. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. When it comes time to record a podcast, I have to figure out when I can do it if I'm not going to miss a week. And I've decided many times, and if you followed along enough, you know that I've always said to myself, I don't know how long I'm going to do this podcast, but I know that this isn't the week where I'm going to stop. So in true to form, I am driving and recording a podcast on my way home from the office. My son, Miles, is right next to me. Go ahead. Give him some love. That's the kid's name, Miles. And he's just, he's like, oh, we can do this. We could get a B cam. Oh, hold it. This looks good. Turn it landscape. <laughs> so we got it all situated so we could record today. And he doesn't know what the topic is today. But the topic is today, you get to ask your dad some questions. And he's going to answer them live in the car on the way home. So, oh, geez, he says. Okay, so, Miles, what about me would you like to know? No, no holds barred. You can't ask for a raise. You can't ask for any of that stuff. But um, turn the camera on yourself and think of something to ask me that maybe you don't know about me. Um, what member of the friend group were you when you were my age? What mem member of the friend group was I when I was yeah, your age? Like the funny guy, the trouble guy. Oh, was I like the funny guy or the trouble guy? Well, you probably already know I wasn't the get in trouble guy. I was the type of kid in high school that was friends with a whole lot of different groups of people, a whole lot of different cliques. I know when you get in high school, Right, you, you break off, they're the popular kids, the jocks and the goth kids and the art kids and the nerd kids and the math kids. Well, sometimes those were the same when I was... Nerds Nerds didn't have the same thing going for them that they did back then as they do now. Like, nerds have really, like, gained a lot of market share in the last 20 years. But I was just... I, as you can, it's probably not that hard to, to realize that I was kind of the person that liked being friends with a lot of groups of kids. So I was kind of cool with everybody, right? I didn't have any enemies that I, well, maybe a couple people that didn't like me, maybe. But um, I like to, to just get time knowing people and knowing all different types of people with different things that they were into. So um, I, I guess the role I probably played in a lot of those groups was like, I was, I was the nice kid, right? I was the nice guy. Uh -huh. uh, when things got to college, um, I probably carried a lot of that forward. However, in college, I started to kind of understand the the entrepreneurial wings a little bit. And so once I was in college, I, I kind of always had something going. I was always in a little bit maybe of a leadership role because I was always putting something together. Uh, in college, a lot of that had to do with music and putting bands together. And, you know, through college, I was kind of the point man in the band. I'd write the songs and I'd build the website. I built a website for our band in Dreamweaver. If you remember what that is. What year? Oh, I can impress you more with that. So that in college, we're talking like 98, 99. Mm -hmm. um, but my high school band had a website. Jeez. And it was full of clip art, but that was like dial-up internet. And we're talking like 1995, 96. We were probably the only high school band with a website in the country. But... um. And now I, yeah. So there you go. That's the question. That's what I was. All right, ask me another question. When you were my age, did you have any idea what you wanted to do when you grew up? It's a much better question. Much better question. Second time, he had to get warmed up. Um, did I know, so Miles is 15, and he's going to be 16 in August, so he's around the corner from 15 to 16. I Let's see what I wanted to do. When, I don't think I really had much of an idea on what I was going to do for a living or what I wanted to do when I was your age. Um, I didn't grow up in a house that put a lot of uh, weight or attention or intentionality on school or education. Very blue-collar family. Um, no one in my family, both my parents or their parents um, or their siblings. I don't know how many, if anyone had really gone to college that I knew of. And so um, I think I just I just did what my dad did, really, and that was just lean in and work. Um, I was working when I was your age. I had um, I had two jobs at the time, and I was about to go in, turn 16, get my working papers, and uh, get my first kind of on the books job. So when I was your age, I had paper route. Uh, work for some homage folks cleaning uh, rotisserie grills and working a produce stand, mowing lawns, shoveling snow. And, um, yeah, and then when I turned 16, like, that just picked up speed. I got a job at Burger King and then Denny's and then cooking and serving. It probably wasn't until I thought I was going to go into 
ministry. I thought I was going to be a youth pastor. I was real involved with my church. And, uh, but being a youth pastor and wanting to do that really was just me saying, I think it'd be really awesome if I got to drive around in a van with a bunch of, you know, high school age kids taking them to amusement parks with my girlfriend. So that sounded really good to me, but, um, I didn't end up doing any of that. Um, I actually realized I don't want anything to do with these groups. I am all about caring for people. All right, you get one more question. Why are you always in a rush? <laughs> the reason I'm always in a rush is because I always see opportunity to do something. And usually there's a map in my mind to how that is beneficial. Um, so I don't walk even in our office. You see now that you're working, like I run to the bathroom. I literally jog to the bathroom around the house. I'm always moving. You know, one of the downsides of having so many things that are going on in my head and so many things I want to get done is that uh, sometimes I don't slow down enough to enjoy the moment, right? I always feel like um, by rushing, I can get, you know, two times the things done in a day. And, um, you know, just like everything in life, I guess it has pros and cons. And um, my mental <laughs> my mental dialogue is telling me, if you Harry, you can do this and this and this and this and have the efficiency down so I can do this while I'm doing this. And the good parts about it is like, hey, that makes for... Um, a really productive entrepreneur started a number of companies running several companies right now um, have a family and all the things that we do as a family the downside of that right because every strength has a weakness the weakness is um, people in my life including you and you know the people that you know work work with us at congruent and Asodu and contagious you know could feel like I'm too busy for them or that they're not as important um, they're not as important as they should be and all the other things on my mind are are more important so you know that's why I'm always in a rush because I feel like there's always something to do and I want to live a life full of meaning and purpose and productivity so that's a good thing thing that comes along with that I really got to watch out because I can stop uh, paying attention to the people and the feelings and the hearts and the minds that are really and truly my goal are really and truly the legacy that I want to leave and, um, you know, the stuff I do and the things I get accomplished, guess what? No one's going to remember that. No one's going to remember the businesses I built or the things I accumulated or the little tasks that I got done through the day. People are actually just going to remember the way they feel when they were around me. And I don't want that feeling to be that I didn't have any time for them. So, Miles, well done. Way to end it with the hardcore question at the end. This kid right here. <laughs> and so... We hope that you find the time for the people that mean something in your life today. Thank you, as always, for spending a few minutes with us as we produce this for you. Because you probably won't remember this episode, but hopefully you'll slow down for a minute as a result of hearing this. Because I know there are a lot of hustlers out there in Clarity Compressed Land on the grind, building things, growing things. Don't forget the things that are most important. We will see you probably not from the car, next week. We came to fight.